I'm Zach Harvey with KMMO.com and today we're taking a tour of the Miami Levy District. My tour guide today is Mendel Elson who is a member of the Miami Levy District and uh, Mr. Elson why don't you tell us where we're at right now. We are uh, approximately four miles east of the city of Miami uh, downstream. We are at the bluff side of our levee district system. Our primary focus now and over the course of the last few years is that we will uh, ride the levee every other day uh, checking for day. varmint holes. Yeah, yeah, just depending on kind of what the river's doing. But uh, we're looking for uh, dig holes in the sides of the levee from various varmints such as the uh, skunks and coons and, and uh, coyotes with the worst being the badgers which will dig a hole that can be six seven foot burrowed right into the side of the levee and, and we feel that those holes in particular can particularly compromise the integrity of typically fill about 15 holes every other day when we make our run. I mean, it, the longer the river is up, the more the varmints seem to dig as, as, as everything that's left down here migrates to some form, you know, looking for higher ground. looking for holes dug into the levee by animals. Uh, Correct. How do you, do you see them from the vehicle? Or? Well, what, what we, we were fortunate in the fact that uh, early on in May, through uh, phone conversations and whatnot, we decided that uh, we ought to mow the levees about two months early. So we mowed, got our uh, contractor in here, and we got our levee mowed about two months earlier than normal. And if you pan off to the right, you would see here on the right that uh, very bottom section down there didn't get mowed. So if, if we had not gotten the levees mowed, we would be trying to look through grass and weeds that were waist high or higher and would significantly impair your ability to see a little pile of dirt. But since the levees have been mowed and we've got them all down nice and low, it, it makes it relatively easy to ride along and see you know, if there's a fresh pile of dirt where something has been working. Now, uh, this stretch of levee that we're on right now, uh, how much of this, how far do you maintain? We have uh, over 12 miles of levee here that we maintain. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it takes us about uh, three hours to run it when we are running it in this fashion, uh, you know, give or take, depending on the number of holes and how big they are. We, we are taking sandbags with us in the event that uh, we're a little bit short on material to finish filling the hole out. We'll have a little sand with us to finish, finish the filling process. Well, that brings me to my next question. When you do find one of these holes, what do you do to fill it? Well, I, I have no doubt that uh, we're going to be able to show everyone just exactly the process. Uh, little holes that are dug by skunks or raccoons or coyotes, you know, they're just usually anywhere from six inches to a foot deep and, you know, just a matter of a quick fill with those. Uh, a badger hole, however, can be 
upwards of six to seven foot deep back into the levee and uh, the only way to get those filled and, and get them re-established re-establish the integrity of the levee is we literally have to dig out the top of the hole and we'll have to dig back in at least three foot into the side of the levee digging the top of the hole out so that we can then reach to the back of it with a shovel or many shovels full of dirt so that we can you know completely fill that cavity back in and not have a void that may later uh, cave in or you know create a potential uh, pocket that would we feel significantly weaken the integrity of the levee you know I, I don't know how bad or how many Badgers, there are how many work on other levees, but you know we we're extremely concerned that these badger holes significantly compromise the integrity of our levee. <clears throat> this is one of the places that uh, shows us the potential of huge problems, as you can see here. We're down at the very bottom of the levee. We're right here at the crop line. And if you pan over just a little bit, you can see the water literally oozing up out of the ground. And again, not very deep, but 100% saturation. And where we have this badger hole right here at the base of the levee, you know, we feel like these are really extremely crucial to find these and patch these because this whole area of ground if you'll zoom in right here in front of me you can literally see that that ground is just absolutely nothing but putty here and watch as I just touch the ground repeatedly just look at the water just boiling up here out of the ground I mean there is just that is just water is just right there and if you have a six or seven foot hole burrowed into the side of your levee you'll have water start coming right up out of there I mean we are at 100 plus percent saturation here and these are the kind of holes that really make us nervous we have our first badger hole of the day Judging from the comparison there of a full grown man standing there and how deep the shovel. Go ahead and step up there and let's look down in that hole. And these, the, this is what we feel like. We already threw a few shovels of dirt in there, but we feel this can significantly compromise the integrity of a levee. Well, this isn't even, you know, a, a big one, is it? It it's it's not the biggest one we've ever found, but it's, it's pretty good size. It's pretty good size, and it's uh, it, it doesn't tunnel quite as much as some of them. But I mean, you can just tell by this sheer volume of dirt laying out here on top of the grass that I mean, they're like an excavator. <laughs> Now, will you guys keep running the levees until we're below flood stage, or how long will you keep doing it? Yeah, we will. Uh, uh, flood stage here at Miami is 18 foot, and uh, this morning we're at 28 foot. And, you know, we will continue to run the levees until probably uh, 20 foot, you know, and falling. Uh, but, but it, we have found that it's just so much easier to, to be ahead of or stay on top of stuff than it is to get behind and try to fight to catch up. So, you know, yes, we will maintain, you know, a vigilant on this until we know that the river is going to go below flood stage and stay there. So, and hopefully that'll be well before harvest starts. 
We've completed our tour of the Miami Levy District. I'd like to thank Mr. Elson for taking myself and our viewers at KMMO.com around the Levy District. And thank you for coming out. We appreciate the opportunity to inform the public at large as to just exactly what the plight is that uh, we're, we're facing out here and how it does actually affect everyone. For KMMO.com, I'm Zach Harvey.